Hello, welcome to Woodland Permaculture. I'm Jenny Wood and today I'm going to be working with some seeds. I'm going to be harvesting some seeds and then I'm going to plant some seeds. And this is a great thing to start doing in the fall so that you can save those seeds for next year and maybe to share with others. I am going to start today with my narrow leaf milkweed plant and that is a native plant here to California. And as many of you already know, it supports monarch butterflies. So I'm hoping that one day I will find some monarch butterfly caterpillars and other things on my plant and hopefully we'll support that population of butterflies. But today I am going to harvest some seeds and maybe try and plant them, see if they'll grow and share them with other people. Now the milkweed gets these interesting pods. Here's one right now just about ready to burst open with seeds. And here's another pod with seeds that you may see. And they get seeds that are covered in these wonderful um, white fluffy uh, uh, kind of parasols that help them to fly through the air and get planted in different places. So I'm going to start um, by taking this pod just as it is. And then once I get it in, I'll open it up and we'll get the seeds out of it. But I'll also take some of these other seeds that have already started to pop out of their pods. You also may have seen in my first shot a uh, um, ladybug. I'm so excited about getting some ladybugs. I see several on this plant now, which is great because it's been inundated with aphids for quite a while. So finally the um, ladybugs are back to help get rid of those. Another seed I like to harvest are tomato seeds. And those are a little bit different when you're harvesting and saving them. But for now, I'm just gonna pick a few. These are some lovely yellow pear tomatoes that I love. And we wanna get them when they're really, really ripe. The more ripe they are, the more viable the seeds inside will be. It's also great to harvest seeds from flowers, especially flowers that are really beneficial to your garden. Here are some marigolds, and I, they, there's one really great flower that's pretty much all the way spent. And so inside there are going to be a whole bunch of seeds, hopefully ready to plant. This one actually may not even be ready. Uh, I see some seeds, but they're pretty green. So let me see if I see any others that are a little more dried. Here we go, let's try this one. This one probably is a lot better. I'm gonna take this one in and maybe a couple of others and see if I can get some, some seeds out of them. Marigolds are great in the garden because they're, um, they're good for beneficial insects, but they also repel some of the bad insects. And the last seeds I'm going to harvest today out back are going to be morning glory seeds. Now, I know you might be thinking morning glories, those just, you know, grow. You don't need to harvest those seeds. But we love our morning glories and I want them in specific places. So I'm going to harvest some of the seeds. And so then next year I can plant them in the places I want them. I don't need to plant them now for fall. I'm just going to save these for spring and then plant them directly in the ground where I want the morning glories to grow. And when the flowers on the morning glories are spent, they make these great little pods that have seeds right in them, ready to go. So these are great and easy to harvest. I do have one more thing from which to harvest some seeds, and that is an artichoke flower. So I have a couple of artichoke plants in my front yard and I was a little late in harvesting those because of life. And so I ended up just letting them go to seed. They make these beautiful purple flowers that the bees love. And then now that it's completely spent, on the inside are a bunch of seeds. Now getting the seeds out of this is a little trickier 
and you probably want to have gloves because these things are spiky. But I get a nice big serrated knife and I just cut it open. There we go. And then you can start to see the seeds down at the bottom of the um, of the hairs there. There's a few seeds right there. And then we just kind of go like this and you can start to see the seeds pop out. And so then I just keep kind of pulling this open, pulling it open until more and more seeds fall out. There's some there. And I did this with another one last week and got just a bunch of seeds out of them. And then if any of those grow, then you've got more artichokes that you can share with other people. And I'm going to kind of experiment, see if they work. And if they do, then I'll share the seeds as well as maybe some plants of artichokes with other people who might like them. They are a great perennial so that you don't have to plant them again every year. And they provide food, which is kind of the goal in permaculture, is to be able to grow your own food. So I love this. The other thing I love about seed harvesting is that it really completes the cycle. So the whole life cycle of planting the seeds and then growing and then harvesting the, the fruits of your labor and then finally getting the seeds at the end is really the completion of that beautiful life cycle that God has given to us in our lives. And it's, you know, through, our, through every species on earth has the same cycle. And so being able to help with that cycle with the plants that I have it's just a wonderful blessing to be able to do that, especially if I can share the seeds, share the food with others, and just to help the earth as, as we're doing it all. Okay, now that we've gotten the seeds out of the garden, it's time to kind of prepare them and get them ready to save um, and to dry and to get them ready to plant for whenever it's time to plant them. So let's start with the tomatoes. The tomatoes are a little bit different than other seeds when you, when you want to harvest them. You can cut open, and of course you can see the seeds in the tomato. You all know what that looks like. The one thing that's a little different is that these seeds on a tomato have like a jelly kind of film around them, and you need to get that off to be able to dry them properly and so that they can be viable. So what you do to do that is you just kind of squish out all of the seeds into a glass of water. And then you're going to leave this glass of water on the counter for a couple of days. Now, of course, I'm, I'm not using these particular tomatoes, but you can totally eat the rest of the tomatoes. And so if you do this carefully enough, like, hey, if I just used the knife instead of my finger, you can easily get those out and still have the ability to use these tomatoes and eat them. Hmm. These are so yummy. But once you get those seeds out of there, they're going to be all jelly and goopy. You just kind of leave these on the shelf for a couple of days on the counter. And then um, these seeds, the really good viable ones, are going to sink down to the bottom. They're going to be heavier than the ones floating on top. And so those are the ones that you're going to want to keep. So you kind of strain out the ones that are on the top, and then you strain the ones that are on the bottom, put them on a paper towel in your windowsill to let them dry out for a while. Okay, so that's kind of how you do the tomatoes. Now the rest of them are a little bit easier. Now the artichoke seeds, I, like I said, I did another artichoke last week, and I took those seeds and I put them on a paper towel and put them in the windowsill to dry them out. I think it's, I've always heard it's best to dry out your seeds. Uh, not sure why, but that's, that's what you do. <laughs> I think, oh, I know, so that they don't get mold and fungus on them when you're storing them. So I've noticed that these seeds have a couple of different sizes, and I don't think you can see them, but they have nice big round fat ones and then smaller kind of thin curvy ones. I am 90% sure that the big fat ones are the viable ones. And the smaller ones are not viable, which means they're probably not going to grow. But I'm going to do some experiments with them when I do my planting. 
But first, I'm going to get them ready to save. And so what I do is I put them in a, an envelope, just like this. And then once they're in the envelope, I'm going to label the envelope. Well, I I've also could do that before I put them in. Sometimes that might make it easier to write on the envelope. But we put them in the envelope, and then on the outside, we write our choke and the harvest date, which was last week, but I'm just going to put 8-20-22. That's somewhere in the middle, because I'm going to put the ones that I harvested today in here as well. So that's that. Okay, you do kind of a similar thing with all of the others. Let's look at the um, milkweed seeds. And we've got a few other things mixed up in there. And the milkweed seeds, as I showed you outside, this pod, oh, look at that, all these beautiful seeds in there. And you can see the white silk on there that when they're outside is used to help them fly in the wind. But that this stuff is so easily pulled off. You just pull that right off. And I'm going to use this paper towel. I'm going to put these on here, and I'm going to let them dry out for a few days. And then, at the, just like I did with the artichoke seeds, once they're dried out, I am going to um, put them in an envelope and label them, and then get them ready to maybe plant in the spring. So there's the milkweed seeds. Very similar kind of thing you're going to do with the morning glory seeds. Like I showed you, you've got these great little pods. When you open the pods, these little seeds just pop right out. You see they're black. These are probably dry enough already because the um, pods that they're in are super dry. And so they're probably fine to just go ahead and put them in. But just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and dry them out as well. And I actually have two different kinds of morning glories here. These ones on the counter are really deep purple morning glories, which are really my favorite. And the ones in the bowl that I harvested on camera outside are um, more magenta, pink and red. And those are also lovely, but the dark purple are my favorite. So I'm going to keep those separated just so that I know which ones are which. And then that way I can put them in different places if I want or mix them up if I want, whatever I feel like next spring. What else do I have? I think those are all the seeds that I've harvested that I want to show you. And then next... Let's get ready to plant a few seeds. All right, now I'm on to some seed planting. And I have been trying to plant seeds for the last couple of seasons, two or three seasons, and I have been not having very good luck at all. But I'm a glutton for punishment, so I'm gonna try again. Um, I've been just using basic um, potting soil, and so I hear that's probably not the best, so I'm gonna try something new that I found online, and that has been recommended to me in different places, and that is peat moss and perlite. Uh, some people recommend also compost, but I've also heard that compost isn't necessary for the seeds themselves because they have all the nutrition they need. So maybe compost later when they, after they sprout. So I'm gonna just start with peat moss and perlite, um, equal parts of each. And so I'm gonna mix them up in this bowl here. And I'm going to not be too terribly picky about the measurements, just like a scoop of each of them in there. Now, perlite, I hear, is great for drainage, and the peat moss is just the opposite. It's great for retaining the water. So the blend of them together makes it a perfect balance that it will drain well enough but it will also retain enough moisture to keep the seeds moist, which is what they need to sprout. So here we are with our mixture. I'm going to mix that up pretty well. And then I'm just going to start with these little six things, these little six pods. I've just been saving these for any time that I've been getting little tiny plants from elsewhere so that I can use them for seeds. So there we go. There is one of those filled. And let's start with, oh, also, first I wanted to show you, 
this vegetable planting guide. If you're in the San Joaquin Valley, <coughs> this is a great guide to help you know when you can plant and when you can harvest. And several things can be planted both in spring and in fall. And so I'm going by this guide that I got for <coughs> that I got online from the University of California Cooperative Extension Master Gardeners of Tulare and Kings Counties. So do a Google search for that, and if I can remember, I'll put a link to it in the description. So I'm going to start with some broccoli. I have not had any luck with broccoli, but I've got two different kinds, and we'll see how they do. Both of these say it's recommended for them to start indoors. A lot of my seeds I'm going to need to start outdoors because that's what's recommended. But these and parsley I think I can start indoors. So let's start with broccoli Waltham 29. And let's see if it tells me four to six weeks, seed spacing, uh, about a seed depth of one eighth inch. And of course, I always like to do a few seeds in each little block here so that I, so that I, you know, hedge my bets. And hopefully, if not all of them um, start, then at least a couple of them will start. So I'm going to put two or three in there, and then I'm just going to cover them lightly with a little more stuff on top. I'll take a little off of there. And then I'll do the same in all of these. Uh, two to four. I can always thin them out later. <coughs> this one's ready. Kind of in different spots so that I can separate them hopefully. My hope is that they all grow, but my luck is that uh, I'll be lucky if any of them grow. <laughs> but we will do what we can and keep trying with, uh, with new ideas. Eventually, I will get it right. So here we go. Here we go. A little bit more on each of these. All right. And then I also have some great trays that I purchased just recently. Okay. So these trays are just basic flat trays. They don't have any holes in the bottom. So that when I do water the, the um, seeds, the water can stay in the bottom and continue to water them from beneath. And so that's what I'm going to do. So there's one, and let's see, let's get another one of these and we'll try the other kind of broccoli. All right, so that was Waltham 29. Oh, and I also have to label those, don't let me forget. These are Bell Star broccolis. I try different kinds to see if one works better than another. This one comes in a little seed packet within a seed packet. Let's see how these are. Don't know if this makes a difference or not with the seeds. They are the same company. Oh, this one, these are um, organic. So maybe because they're organic, they put them in a separate little thing. Here we go. These are silver. How cool is that? And there's significantly fewer of them, probably because they're organic. So I'm going to be very careful with these and just do a couple of them in each um, block. And then if I have extra, I'll put more in there. Yeah, there will, there will be enough for like at least three or four in each of these. go. There we go. But then that is all that there will be for those. And then we'll just put a little bit more on top. They just need to be covered up with an eighth of an inch of stuff, so not much. And then there's those. And I will put this on top of them so that I remember what those are. And then the last thing we'll do is some parsley. Now the parsley says it's biennial, which means 
just like I've seen in my garden, and it, it works for a while, and then um, it kind of goes to seed, and then it kind of dries out, and it's not great. So I have to remember that this needs to be planted a little more often. It's not a strict perennial, and that's fine. All right, here we go. Oh, there goes my cuckoo clock. Five o'clock. All right. Let's see what's up with these. Oh, there's quite a lot of these. These are also organic, but there's a lot of them. So there we go. I'll put a few in each of these. Now, you don't need too many parsley plants, but... Uh, just a couple will do because they're a good herb and they uh, they produce quite a bit and you don't need a ton of them. But I'm always trying to hedge my bets because I have so little luck with planting seeds. I want to plant a bunch so that I will have a little bit better chance of having those grow. All right, here we go. So those go there. Now to label them, I've got a couple of these guys right here. This one, the Bell Star, I think I'm just going to kind of stick in there like that. No, I better not. I better tape it. But these two, since there's still seeds in these, I don't want to use the envelope. So I've got some of these things that I've, when I purchased some ground covers, they came with these little plastic things. And so I'm going to use those as labels. So this one is going to be Waltham Broccoli. I'm going to put broccoli, waltham. There we go. And then that can go right in there. And this one is parsley. I'm just going to parsley. <laughs> there we go. All right. And now the only thing I have left to do on these is to water them and to put them. I, I think I'll keep them in a room where I know the temperature will be good. And then um, tomorrow, I think I will try and plant some of these other seeds out in the garden. You've seen me do that before, so you probably don't need to see me do that again. But just so you know, I'm going to try and plant some spinach in hopes to have some spinach. I'm going to try cucumbers. No guarantees on the cucumbers, but, every, you know, I, I, I've seen that they might be able to be planted at this time since we have mild winters. There's another kind of spinach, chamomile. I had chamomile in my garden the first year and I loved it, but it did not recede itself. So I'm going to try again and see if I can, you know, get some seeds from it and, and plant it better. I always love to try beets. I've got a few beets growing in my garden and I'm hoping I can get some more beets for the winter. And then quinoa. Now this is one I've never even tried. I don't know anything about quinoa. I probably better... Um, research that one and then some garlic chives which should be easy and some edamame we'll see how those work but those are the things I'm going to try and plant outside for a fall garden hopefully that will help give us some food through the winter but thank you for joining me today I hope you got a little bit out of this today a little bit of new knowledge or something and I'm grateful that you guys are still joining me in at Woodland here and hopefully you're still enjoying it. Thank you so much. You guys take care and God bless.